the idea of having an academy, a sailing centre of excellence in Weymouth has been around for probably 35 years. Weymouth Bay and Portland Harbour offer some of the best sailing waters in Europe. Very well sheltered from the prevailing southwesterly winds and also a very benign tidal condition, which means that effectively if you're out there sailing, A, you're very safe, and B, local knowledge becomes much less of a factor than it does in many other places around the coast of Britain. So for a long time there has been a desire to have a sailing academy based in Weymouth Bay and Portland Harbour. The land became available from the Southwest Regional Development Agency and uh, the National Sailing Academy was set up in 1999 as a not-for-profit organisation. The Royal Navy decided to close the, the air station here, the helicopter base, and a number of people got together and created a not-for-profit company to try and develop a world-class sailing academy on this site. Now what we mean by that of course is that we will be making money but all the money that we do make will be invested back into the infrastructure of the building to continue to develop it and of course to develop any community uh, involvement that we have as, as we go forward. And then over the next two to three years we worked up a project to apply for major amounts of money to redevelop the site and create what you see here today. By 2003, the funding was in place to enable us to build the academy. The two main funders for this was the South West Regional Development Agency, who owned the land on which the building is now situated, and Sport England via the National Lottery. There were a number of other providers of significant amounts of cash, which included the Weymouth and Portland Borough Council, the Royal Yachting Association, and the County Council, plus a number of donations from individuals. This building was officially opened in June 2005. A month later, of course, there was the Olympic announcement. Um, we had been selected as the Olympic site within the London 2012 bid. And so, um, well, the story starts from there, really. One of the things about sailing, per se, is that it is perceived as a very elitist sport. And, of course, when we had built the academy, it wasn't particularly for the Olympics. However, it was always with the view that if the Olympics ever came to London, then the Olympic Games sailing event would be held at the academy. This all helps to engender the notion that it's a very elitist sport and, and, and it's very difficult to people get to, to get into. Yeah, just much Weymouth and Portland uh, has, has a number of social issues and is a, is a fairly deprived area. So one of our big challenges, of course, is to try and ensure that the, the Sailing Academy is able to offer community access and this is one of our, our biggest challenges and one of actually the most exciting challenges because yes it's all very well having the most fantastic facility with Olympic sailors here and all the, the publicity that is associated with that but of course one of our main aims is trying to, trying to engage with the local community. The Chesil Trust is a registered charity uh, and there are some links between the Academy and the Chesil Trust. Um, whilst I'm employed by the Academy, I'm also clerk to the trustees of the Chesil Trust. We're careful to keep the finances and so on separate. Uh, but in the early days, certain of the organisations that we were seeking to get money from, partnership funding, would only give money to another registered charity. And so we had to um, find a conduit for that money to, to bring it into the Academy. And so the Chesil Trust is an organisation that's set up to try and um, develop facilities for sailing in the local area and to provide people who might not otherwise get the opportunity of experiencing the thrills of, of, and excitement of sailing. Interestingly, Portland, despite being an island, has very little access to the sea. So there are a large number of people on Portland who, despite being surrounded by water, have never actually been onto the sea. And of course, there have been some well-publicised tragedies where people have taken boats for a, a late night jaunt and ended up getting into trouble and ending up in tragedy. So what, one of the biggest things, ironically, is actually going on to the people of Portland and saying, look, let's get you down here, let's get you out onto the water. 
As an example, we do a community scheme with local schools where we try and get as many people as we can out onto the water. They pay £5 a head. Now, we've managed to get over 700 people out onto the water this year in that way. An event such as that costs around about £25 per head. So we did it in such a way that each individual child paid a fiver to make them feel some worth in it. The company that actually delivered the teaching, which is Sail Laser, with whom we partner at the Sailing Academy, they also put in £5. And the remaining £15 was raised and donated by the Chesil Trust. For some of them, it is a life-changing experience, you know, to experience these sort of challenges. Um, we're quite careful about looking after our children. We don't set them too many risks sometimes. Um, they can come and undertake a challenging activity here in perfect safety in that we provide all the necessary safety cover and tuition and so on, good quality equipment and clothing. So they're going to be entirely safe while they're doing it, but perhaps they're challenged a bit more than they are in their normal lives. The turnover is around about one and a half million pounds. Now, that inevitably will increase as we gear up towards the Olympics. One of our big challenges, of course, is to make sure that the legacy from the Olympics actually benefits the local community. And there's a lot of work going on. Next year, for instance, we'll be building another six and a half million pounds of extension to the shoreside activity of the Academy, which will enable us to offer a wider variety of courses and a wider variety of people being able to gain access to the centre. And that is all being funded by the Olympic Delivery Authority, which is fantastic. To run the Olympic Games, two new organisations have been formed. There's the Olympic Delivery Authority, whose job is to build the venues and provide the infrastructure. And there's LOCOG, whose job it is to put on the show. And, and so LOCOG will be responsible for organising the competitions. They'll be employing the competition managers, etc., for 2012. And uh, in 2012, they will come into this venue and effectively take it over for the period of the Games, of the Paralympic Games. We haven't actually spoken much about the Paralympics, but that's a very important aspect. Uh, and we hope that in 2012, we'll actually have more Paralympians um, participating than in any previous Olympic sailing event. As part of our Sport England um, funding, there is a, a, a development plan, community development plan that is in place, but we really see that as just the starting point of where we need to be, and we want to exceed that at, uh, at every level. Obviously, it's a very seasonal business, and between the end of March and the end of October is, is, our, is our peak season, and then we have a quieter period. During the, uh, during the, the, the main peak season we're employing probably 35 full-time members of staff and there are at least another 35 or 40 volunteers who come in and they help run events, they help in, in, in all sorts of other areas. During the, during the quieter, quieter months we'll probably go down to around about 20-25 so it's a fairly seasonal business but we do maintain a core of, core of people who are here. Well, one of the biggest things we've got here is of course that, that this business doesn't stop on September the 30th, 2012. And part of the whole thing that we're doing here is building a legacy. When the new work has been completed, which, as I said, will create an extra 280 dinghy park spaces, 150 metres of usable slipway, plus a mini marina, plus the regeneration that's going on all around us, the opportunities for local people to get involved will be enormous because we will need, leading up to 2012 and beyond, to be putting on bigger and bigger racing sailing events so there will be a lot of people coming here as part of our business going on clearly we need to generate more revenue we need to be able to maintain the building we need to invest in the future etc etc so there will be an enormous number of an enormous effort will go into creating more and more activity at the academy and therefore if we are able to tap into qualified people locally who are able to help with that on a volunteering basis or even on a on a on a paid basis as well then i think that will have a, a tremendous impact on the on the local economy there are enormous opportunities um, i mean from the benefits to businesses in the area from the additional focus that we're getting for weymouth and portland 
um, it is an opportunity for Weymouth and Portland to reposition itself as a tourism destination, um, not just to uh, appeal to the traditional market, which is a bucket and spade type holiday, but also to, to a new and emerging market for um, sailors. And so I think that's something that will benefit the whole of the community. The local authority has calculated that currently we're putting something like £10 million a year into the local economy from our activities here. And so that's supporting almost 200 full-time equivalent jobs. There are good examples of how you actually do build a community sailing club. And one of my plans for the next year or so is to actually start to build that so that we will actually create a genuine sailing club which costs very little to an individual to actually take part. So that hopefully, maybe not for 2012, but certainly 2016 or 2020, we will have more locally based sailors who are involved in the Olympics going forward. And that's, that's our aim, to get a pool of, of well-qualified and, and skilled people enjoying sailing.